Hi, for today, we will be learning about writing chemical formulas. When we write chemical formulas, basically chemical formulas are like the language when we talk about substances that we're dealing in chemistry. There's so many types of compounds that we need to know and there's a lot of chemical formulas also. So for today, we will just be learning about ionic compounds. So basically, when we talk about ionic compounds, these are compounds that are formed from two ions. We have cations, which are formed from the losing of the electrons and the anion, which is also formed from the gaining of the lost electrons from the metals or the cations. We will divide this into two. So we have binary and ternary ionic compounds so that you won't get confused. So let's start with binary ionic compounds. So when we talk about binary, there are only two. So we have a monoatomic cation and a monoatomic anion. So when we say monoatomic, it's made up of only one element. One element with its corresponding charge. Now, most of the elements that I have placed here are the elements in the representative elements. So you need to recall that the groups A and B of the periodic table, or basically the ones in the S and P block elements, you can predict correctly their oxidation numbers or the charges. So for example, calcium. Calcium belongs to group 2A. That means it has to lose two electrons for it to be stable just like your argon so calcium's charge is two plus chlorine on the other hand because it belongs to group 7a that means it needs to gain one more so that it will become eight so chlorine has to have a charge of negative one so these two calcium two plus and chlorine negative one when they pair up and form an ionic bond you know that chlorine needs one while calcium will lose two so basically you can predict that the ratio is you need one calcium for every two chlorine atoms. So therefore, the final chemical formula of the compound that will be formed is CaCl2. For barium and oxygen, it's the same idea. Barium has to lose two because it's in group 2A. Oxygen is in group 6A. That means its charge is negative two. So basically, whatever barium loses, it will be gained by oxygen. So therefore, the ratio of the two elements is barium oxide, BaO, just one barium for every one oxygen. For potassium, the charge is one plus because it belongs to group 1A. Sulfur is in group 6A, so two negative. And so you would predict that the ratio is you need two calcium for every sulfur. So when we deal with iron, Fe3+, plus, this is already in the D block. Basically, there's a way you need to memorize the variety, the diverse nature of the representative element. So you need to be familiar with its varied oxidation numbers. Bromine, which is paired by bromine in group 7A. So if Fe will lose 3, bromine will just gain 1. So you need for every 1 iron, you need 3 bromines. And for chromium, more or less the same idea when paired with oxygen. So how do we shortcut this method in order to determine properly the chemical formula of binary ionic compounds. We call this method crisscrossing method. So when we talk about crisscrossing method, you basically crisscross the values of the oxidation numbers. Don't include the charges. So we know already when we wrote the leads of ionic compounds, you have to begin with the metal and then secondary to that is the non-metal. So you know that Aluminum is 3 plus, so the 3 will become the subscript of O. The 2 of oxygen will become the subscript of aluminum. So the end result is this. You have Al2O3. So the 2 came from oxygen, the 3 came from aluminum. So you crisscross only the values of the um, oxidation number, excluding the charges, because it's assumed that whatever is the start, the, the first element written is the metal, and the second element written is the non-metal. So basically, the metal is the cation, and the non-metal is the anion. So that's basically the crisscross method. Let's proceed to the next. So basically, if you have magnesium 2+, plus, this is another example. Magnesium is group 2A, so the charge is 2+. plus. Rumin is in group 7A, so the charge is 1 negative. When you crisscross it, the end result is MgBr2. If it's a 1, you don't need to write anything in the subscript that's assumed to be 1. So the ratio for every 1 magnesium, you need 
to bromine. So when you write the chemical formula, all the numbers have to be a subscript. Now let's go to this. Let's go to ternary ionic compounds. When we say ternary, basically you're involving already the presence of polyatomic ions. It can be cation or an ion. How does a polyatomic ion look like? Look at this. This is sulfite. This is phosphate. This is ammonium. This is another sulfite. And this is your ammonium and your um, carbonite. So these um, polyatomic anions and cations are composed of more than one type of element. And there's no shortcut in memorizing this, but you just need to be familiar with our polyatomic ions. That's why I gave you the list. And so you have to be familiar of the name and the chemical formulas of these polyatomic ions. So there's nothing that will change. If you notice, if I have calcium 2 plus and a sulfite, when I crisscross it, it's the same method when you crisscross it. Since the, uh, the value of the oxidation numbers are the same, you need to cancel it out. That means the ratio for the two is just one is to one. You need one calcium for every sulfite because calcium will lose two, sulfite will need to gain two. So basically the resulting chemical formula is calcium sulfite, CaSO3. If you have barium, 2 plus, and phosphate, PO4, 3 negative, when you crisscross it, the ratio is 3 is to 2. So that's Ba3, PO4, 2. However, you see a symbol here. You see a parenthesis. So parenthesis is applicable if you have a ratio that is not 1 is to 1, it's more than 1 is to 1, and the subscript values are different. It doesn't apply here because the subscript values are the same. So basically that cancels out. But if the subscript values are different and it's not one, then you need to be able to put a parenthesis because you need to group the polyatomic ion because it consists of more than one element. So the parenthesis will group them. Same with thing with ammonium and S2 negative. When you, sorry, when you crisscross it, it's going to become an H4, then enclose it with parenthesis 2, and then 1S. There's a need to enclose NH4 because there are two elements we're talking about. We have nitrogen and hydrogen, and it's not 1. For Fe3+, plus in SO3, 2 negative, because the values are different, when you crisscross it, the, the, the result will be this, Fe2, SO3, 3. And if you have ammonium and carbonite, so it's 1 plus and 2, different subscript values and it's not one so therefore you need to enclose your nh4 with the parenthesis because it's more than one and it needs to include everything in your um, ammonium so basically the shortcut for crisscrossing of your polyatomic ions or the ternary ionic compounds is if the subscript value is more it's just a one and it will go to the ion, the polyatomic ion, when you crisscross it, then that means you don't have to put a parenthesis. You just have to simplify it, and it becomes like that. So for potassium and sulfate, it's going to be K2SO4. We did not put a parenthesis for K because it's just one element. And for sulfate, there's also no parenthesis because it's just one. For the next, if you have calcium 2 plus and NO3 negative 1, so the 1 will go to calcium, the 2 will go to the NO3, so that means the result is calcium, open parenthesis, NO3 2. I hope you understand that. So basically, these are some of the examples of crisscrossing polyatomic ions or crisscrossing your ternary ionic um, ions. So you have calcium and nitrate. So the result is this. If you have aluminum and hydroxide, remember hydroxide is O and H. So when you put a 3 to OH, it should be the entire oxygen and hydrogen in the hydroxide, hydroxide ion. So that means you need ALOH parenthesis 3. For barium and sulfate, because it's 2 and a 2, so you reduce that, it will just become BASO4. This one, no need because the 3 will just go to Na and it's just 1 for PO4. And for potassium, it's just it's 1. And then for SO4, the 2 will go to K. So no need to put any parentheses. So that's it. That's it.
That's the shortcut. Remember to simplify subscripts and the parentheses will only be applicable if you have a polyatomic ion and the subscript value is 